What a huge game in Sky Bet League One. Sunderland against Sheffield Wednesday in the League One playoff semi final. One of those semi finals, of course, Wickham. They beat MK Dons yesterday. A really, really fascinating game of football, this one. Certainly not one you're going to remember for years to come in terms of the most attractive game of football, but certainly one I'm looking forward to break down, analyse, uh, and sort of give my opinions on, to be honest. Let me know in the comments down below. Sheffield Wednesday, Sunderland fans. I'm intrigued to see your thoughts on the game. But certainly one we can sort of take sort of different angles on. And I'm really interested to sort of see what you've got to say, most importantly, as well. We've got lots of content coming your way. Of course, the playoffs, the entirety of League One. Make sure you hit that subscribe button and that notification bell as well. Like I said, probably not the most, probably not the most attractive game of football. You know two sides that definitely do prominently this season have played very, very good styles of play. But the playoffs can do very, very different things. Like I said in the preview, it's not a different, it's, it's not a different, it's not lottery. It's definitely a different breed at points. And we definitely saw tonight players and, and teams maybe doing th things slightly different in those pressured environments. You can certainly see why so much on the line. Two sides, very, very big sides, huge sides, you'd say, in England, both believing and hoping they can play at the, the, the next level up in the championship come next season. But both of them will not be. One of them will be in League One next year. And of course, Monday sets up a really, really interesting game for that second leg because that tie is far from over. This tie is it couldn't be further away from over other than it being a draw. Of course, Sunderland, they're going to take a very, very important and I think very, very happy first uh, one goal lead into that second leg. However, Sheffield Wednesday, they'll know they weren't at their best today at all. However, that's a very, very doable turnaround at Hillsborough. They'll believe they can do that. But let's not look at that too much. I look forward to that game. Like I said, it's far from over. Over. However, let's have a look at what we've seen tonight because lots of different things we can take away from the game. And most importantly, fair play to Sunderland. I thought Sunderland were the better side, if I'm being honest. I don't think many Sheffield Wednesday fans will disagree with me too much. I thought Sunderland, they looked very, very good. The first half, definitely not as good as the second half. And ironically, the first half is where that goal came from. I thought in the first half, and definitely the, the majority of that first half, it was, a, it was a game and it was two sides that looked edgy, looked quite tight, didn't want to make a mistake. And you can exactly see why. No one wants to make a mistake in a first leg, especially of a playoff game with so much on the line. You do not want to be the player that makes that mistake and costs your team. Interestingly, I think Sheffield Wednesday will feel that a mistake did lead to that Ross Stewart uh, goal that was the only goal of the game. However, you don't want to be a, you don't want to be the player that makes that sort of mistake, and you don't want to you don't want to open the game up too much. Although maybe as a neutral, you do want that. You don't want that as a, as a player or as a or as a manager. Really, of course, you want to go and take the lead if you can, but keep it quite tight, especially in the opening moments of a very very high profile big game of football. Record attendance. I wasn't even at the game, obviously. However, watching it on Sky Sports, watching it from home an amazing atmosphere can we keep the game tight and that was definitely the match I feel from, from both uh, of those managers and also with the environment with the very like I said heavily pressured environment it naturally does fall into that a lot of the time it did need a goal. That that game definitely needed a goal. And thankfully, as a neutral, we did see that goal. It was going to be interesting to see not just how Sunderland reacted, but also how Sheffield Wednesday were going to react because they definitely weren't at their best in the first half. I wouldn't say many teams were at their best at all across the game. However, in the first half, not really either side got the game going the way they wanted to. I think Sunderland would probably go in at halftime if it was nil nil. They didn't score that late goal. Probably the happier, but definitely going in happier after going one and up through Ross. We'll look at that goal a little bit more detail in just a second but Sunderland definitely on top in terms of possession and not really allowing Sheffield Wednesday to get any sort of rhythm I wouldn't necessarily say Sunderland got amazing rhythm but if I had to say one side did get more momentum in that first half it probably would be Sunderland the way they had the ball and like I said I said it in the preview really both sides like having the ball it's going to be really interesting to see both sides that like having possession like controlling the game who between these games were going to have more of the possession. I said normally the home side will. I think I was right there. Sunderland definitely did have more of the possession across the game. And specifically in that first half, it wasn't a brilliant game of football at all. And it definitely needed a goal. Thankfully, that did come. But Sunderland definitely having more of the possession, more and more of the ball, and not really on Sheffield Wednesday to get the players they wanted to on the ball. Barry Bannon definitely in particular. Having not many touches at all. I think it was the second least touches across any player in that first half. And that's a concern. That would have been a concern going in at half time of Darren Moore. Someone like Barry Bannon, you want to get on the hold you want to get hold of the ball. You need to give him the opportunity, the space in the midfield, which we knew Sunderland weren't going to give it give him easily at all. But he's a player that in moments like like these and in games like these where it can be so tight, where it can be so 
almost turgid at points, especially in that first half, he can get hold of a game by a moment of magic. And if, if Sheffield Wednesday get him hold of the ball, that can that can easily happen. It, you know, not easily, it, you know, definitely not easily for everybody, but Brian Bannon can make it certainly look easy. Um, and unfortunately, Sunderland were very, very switched on from a Sheffield Wednesday perspective and did not let them have, didn't let them have the ball, didn't let them really get any sort of rhythm because the last thing you can do is allow Sheffield Wednesday to get that rhythm. Same with both sides, really. It was almost a battle of who could get that rhythm, who could get more of the momentum across the game because both sides, like I said, like having the ball. Battle for possession was the first thing and then could a goal come from it? And ultimately, I think Sunderland won both of those battles in that first half and probably across the 90 minutes. They definitely won the possession battle and definitely won the game in terms of the goal, it being 1-0. I thought the first goal and the only goal of the game, ironically, I thought both sides defended fairly well in the first half, but it was a mistake from Hutchinson for that only goal of the game for Ross Stewart. And you've got to give credit to Ross Stewart, although it definitely was a mistake for Hutchinson. I thought the mistake... Um, was probably gonna, it's probably going to be mentioned more than the, the brilliance, I'd say, of Ross Stewart. I thought he was absolutely phenomenal across the game, to be honest. To be, I, I think, although he got one goal, he could have maybe had two. In that second half, he did have a big chance. But I thought, generally across the game, I was really impressed with Ross Stewart. But in that first goal in particular, using his physicality, using his pace, I thought it was really, really, really good. And if there's any message, any message you can take from that first goal, don't give up because Hutchinson was not happy with that Ross Stewart pressure and that awful attempt of a back pass slash you know, whatever he's trying to do, it leads in a goal. A bit of luck initially with that goalkeeper saving it in Sheffield, when, at Sheffield Wednesday, not being able to, to fully get hold of the ball from the, from, you know, with the goalkeeper saving the initial shot. A bit of luck you take for Sunderland, but when you work that hard and you get that sort of resilience as a striker, you probably do deserve that luck. Um, but it was not a nice goal with Sheffield Wednesday con to concede ultimately because I thought both sides defended fairly well in that first half. But, it wasn't an amazing amount of chances for either side. However, the chance they did have in the first half of both sides, I thought they were defended fairly well. But the moment where Ross Stewart was on the charge and, and definitely we know the problems he can cause, Hutchinson just needed to clear those lines, needed to get rid of the ball. He did not like the pressure uh, of Ross Stewart there. And to be honest with you, that was probably, although, you know, I'm, the, I'm no Sunderland fan, I'm no Sheffield Wednesday fan. However, that, get, that game definitely needed a goal. And it was going to be fascinating. I said at half time, who's going to react better or who's going to react at all uh, from that goal? Was it going to be Sunderland that maybe get complacent and Sheffield Wednesday come out firing? Or are Sunderland going to take huge confidence from that first half goal and from that first half lead? And then Sheffield Wednesday don't really get going at all in the second half. To be honest, it probably is the latter. I, I thought Sunderland definitely came out with confidence. I thought Sheffield Wednesday couldn't really, although they defended those Sunderland attacks really, really well, they couldn't really create any attacks of their own of real quality. I thought Clark, I thought Roberts on the flanks of Sunderland were really, really impressive. I was, I was really quite impressed with those players. And although they didn't, you know, they, they definitely had chances. Um, I thought, well, Patrick Roberts probably had the better chance. Really good block from Hutchinson in that second half, redeeming himself for that mistake in the first half. Um, Clark had, had really, really good moments. But the way they use the flanks, the, the pace they've got, the skill they've got, I was really, really impressed with those two, uh, with those two wing backs slash full backs slash wide midfielders slash wingers. They can play everywhere uh, on those flanks. So I was really, really impressed with them uh, and the way they got hold of the ball and took players on. It was almost the best form of, of, of defence, really. Attacking was the best form of defence for, for Sunderland, especially in that second half. And that's exactly what they would have wanted to do. Not allowing, not sitting back, not just being complacent when you are winding up and allowing them to have the ball. Because, like I said, it's almost a battle of rhythm, almost a battle of possession. With two sides that love having the ball, you do not want to be giving up that battle, that well-earned battle, when you are controlling the game in terms of you know creating chances getting and getting hold of the ball and winning possession back. You do not want to allow Sheffield Wednesday to get that sort of momentum in the game. Thankfully, they didn't for a Sunderland perspective. And very, very annoying, I can imagine, as a Sheffield Wednesday. Wednesday fan. Um, and, and that's sort of where I am across the 90, really. I think Sheffield Wednesday are going to go away from this game, of course, disappointed with the result. However, fully aware that this second leg is still a lot to play for. Everything to play for, ultimately, for them. And suddenly they'll be very, very happy with going, you know, 1 0 to Hills. We're very, very important one goal lead. However, they did have chance in that second half. A bit of mistake, a bit of mix up at the back. The goalkeeper heading it to Ross Stewart. They probably should have done better with that chance. And a definitely a big chance to make it 2 0. So maybe there's an argument Sunderland are going to come away 
although happy with the result, could have been even happier if they'd gone on um, and doubled their lead, maybe even tripled their lead. Um, and and that'll be a really fascinating take for you in the comments down below. What are you feeling from this game? Because like I said, this tie is far from over. I think if I was going to give Sheffield Wednesday any sort of a, a real credit, I thought the defenders set pieces really well. I thought Sunderland had a lot of set pieces. I thought Pritchard was really good uh, for Sunderland uh, in the game. Not the best set pieces, to be honest. A few of them that I thought were decent, but defended really quite well. But I thought in the game uh, and on the field, from from you know non 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 dead boards from from not set pieces, I thought it was really really impressive. I thought the way that uh, he created a lot of chances for Sunderland players. I thought it was a real spark in in that game, and he's almost what Brian Bannon needed to be for Sheffield Wednesday. Someone who could just always went the ball, got the got the ball through him, and created those chances. And, and Pritchard certainly did that. I think Sheffield Wednesday would be really annoyed that Brian Bannon wasn't able to do that in the game, and probably a big reason why they don't come away with with, with a goal or, or anything from the game. Ultimately, when you look at that bigger picture. But I'm, I'm fascinated going into Monday. And like I said, this game, it, it wasn't the most attractive game of football. It wasn't the most, um, yeah, it, it definitely wasn't the most the most amazing game of football for a neutral. However, it certainly was quite fascinating to see how those sides were going to match up. Two sides that like having the ball, really sort of similar styles of play in the sense they like attractive, to create a sort of attractive brand of football. Both sides, uh, managers in that sense, like to have a, that sort of attacking, free-flowing style of play uh, and like to really sort of, get hold of the ball, like I said, and create lots of chances within the possession. And it was going to be interesting to see, because not both, I mean, it's very, very rare that both sides are able to do that. You know, no, always, unless it's 50-50 possession, of course, someone's always going to win that possession battle and then therefore probably create more of those chances nine times out of ten or probably seven times out of ten, to be honest. Um, and I think today, Sunderland definitely were that team. But the atmosphere, like I said, you could tell the atmosphere was definitely feeding onto the players. And I think that was a really, really big boost. We know the home advantage. We know how key the home advantage is. And if we're going to mention that, you've got to look at Monday because, like I said, Sheffield Wednesday, they are 1-0 down. However, they've got that home advantage at Hill it's going to be really, really interesting to see how they react and how they go again because it's not long at all. Of course, they've got Monday, uh, you know, until Monday to prepare and get ready for a huge, huge game. The biggest game of both of these side seasons because pretty much now, if you play another game after this one, it will be your biggest game of the season because it means you're still in for a shout of a promotion to the championship. Really, really, really interesting stuff. Like I said, let me know in the comments down below. I'm intrigued to see what you've got to say. Maybe you're a man of the match as well because if I had to give a man of the match... It's tough to be honest. It's tough to be honest. I thought Sunderland's defence were, were really, really good. I thought, um, is, it, is it Bath at the back? I thought he was really, really solid. Um, I thought uh, Pritchard, like I've already mentioned Pritchard, I thought he was a really, really good player as well. I thought he looked very, very good in the game as so being a sort of a creative option. Uh, also, a lot of the ball going through him. Very unlucky hitting the crossbar in that second half as well. Um, I thought he was he was really impressive. Like I said, I was really impressed with, with, with Roberts and Clark. I thought Clark had a really slow first half, but I thought a lot of Sunderland players, a lot of players generally had a slow first half. Not really, like I said, either side really getting going and really getting sort of um, their, their playing styles across in that first half very easily at all. So it probably wasn't a, a brilliant first half to sort of judge at all. Um, but I thought in the second half, much, much better, especially those Sunderland individuals. I think Sofa score, they've gone with a man of the match of Ross Stewart to beat Ross Stewart. I'd certainly have to, to, to give a, a, a big, big um, a big bit amount of praise for, for Ross Stewart and certainly a candidate for my man of the match. I thought he took his goal, like I said, very, very well. I thought it was a really good option for them. I thought the second chance where, I think it was Luke 09 that just pumped the ball forward, it might be Jack Clark that pumped the ball forward, um, and definitely caused absolute havoc for Ross Stewart, uh, sorry, um, for the defenders when Ross Stewart came charging at them. Then the goalkeeper came out and headed it towards nobody ultimately. And Ross Stewart gets hold of it. Maybe he could have a little bit better with that chance. But ultimately, just his presence today and um, his presence against Sheffield Wednesday definitely, definitely, um, I think, was, was probably a bit of a. Definitely was. Definitely nerved them. Definitely nerved Sheffield Wednesday. But we know that because Ross Stewart can do that to pretty much any opposition, I can imagine. Uh, and he has done pretty much to every opposition that he's played in across this, or across this season. But I thought it was really. Really, really good today. And like I said, so much to play for. Not Sheffield Wednesday's night at all. However, going in to that second leg, so much to play for. And like I said, it certainly is not over. I cannot wait for that game. Let me know in the comments down below what you think from today's game, but also what you think from the next game as well. Of course, tomorrow, hopefully bringing out my predictions sort of looking at, uh, of course, the uh, semi-finals, the whole course, uh, for, sorry, the first leg. And then we'll have a look at the second leg as well, predicting uh, all of those second legs as well. And sort of what we can see going in to a really, really interesting Sunday and Monday in League One, looking at the second leg of the playoffs. I've been Jack, it's been the Unfound Podcast, it's been a match reaction for Sunderland against Sheffield Wednesday, giving my thoughts, tactically breaking down the game as well. And uh, yeah, I'll see you next time. Leave your thoughts in the comments down below. I'll see you all very, very soon. See you in a bit.